Hello and welcome to the, I think, the most interesting chapter in the whole series of uh, the ebook and, of course, the video. Now, this is, of course, the preview about uh, the attacking main, absolute main line for white, the ninth move, bishop to f6. Now, why I think that this is the ultimate way how to play with white, because uh, if you take a look from very first move c5, you will see that black always try to play for something more with a Sicilian than just the equal position. And then I think that white need also to be very creative and active and not to allow black to take over the control or even the initiative. So after the knight e4, knight f6, knight c3, e5, knight d to b5, d6, bishop g5, a6, knight a3 and b5 will run into the move bishop to f6. And now, of course, here you can easily see that the queen f6 is not good because of the knight d5 and black will lose too many tempi and uh, time for nothing. So this is, of course, not the way of play. Because of that, obviously, g takes on f6 is the ultimate move for black when you can see that uh, related with the position with a positional approach with knight d5, here black has a broken pawn structure on the um, f file. Now, you can look at this as the broken pawn structure, but you can also look at these pawns like really strong pawns for the counter-attack and the strike in the center. Basically because this, move, uh, this pawn from f6 can easily go on f5 in very next move, creating important uh, pawn break and trying to somehow um, not allow white to maintain very strong position in the center. Now, after the move g takes on f6, white, of course, move is knight d5 because b4 will, in all other moves, just lose a piece. And now we are in a position where the main move is the f5. And to be honest, I play f5 uh, in few of the tournament games and I think that uh, I didn't manage to get the, even the equality in, uh, in all of those games. Then I start analyzing some lines, I start to look at some positions and the games of the Super GMs of course and then I came to the conclusion where um, I, after I found some, some, somehow the ideas that are nice and that I show in the video, that black can fight on some other way. Now, why I don't like f5, to be honest? I have no problem after the f5 in the main lines, uh, which are, in my view, not something very serious, because, okay, it will be very close to the lines which I show in the in the book and of course in the video, but also White somehow will uh, not get as much as he can get, I think, in the positions after the bishop b5 or even knight b5. So those are the moves that I really don't like. And the problem is here basically because uh, White will always have very easy play. And after the knight b5 or bishop b5, what will happen is the position where white will just try to push the pawns on the queen side. Okay, black has the piece, but black has also the problems to organize the counter attack. And because of that, mainly I abandon the line with f5 and I try to do something else. And then uh, I came to the conclusion after a few months of uh, researching that here is very strong move bishop to g7. Of course, this is a move from the players who start playing this, of course, uh, much uh, before than I, but uh, I think that this move is very, very strong move. First of all, you never allow white to take on b5 because now knight b5 or bishop b5 will not, not, not get white anywhere because in one move black can just try to castle on the king side, which is not the case if this bishop is on f8, and then this, then this king um, is somehow stuck in the center. So here, after the move bishop g7, this is so-called Novosibirsk variation, white has a lot of the potential. Basically, here, something that uh, is, is, is a very nice um, approach is the move 
C4, which I think is something very serious, and I dedicate uh, a lot of details there to show you how to fight against this move. And basically, you should always fight in those positions. So F5 is here the main move for black, which will get incredible potential for both of the sides. But I think, and I show you in the video, of course, in the book also, how to play and fight against this idea from white. What I also show you here is how to play against the moves like queen h5, because here white also have very positional idea after the attacking move uh, bishop f6, which is not allowing black to play f5. But then after the knight e7, you can see that somehow black managed to take control over the f5 square, because if knight takes on e7 and queen takes on e7, c3 will run into the queen b7. And now the next move will be the f5. For instance, if bishop d3, then even d5 is possible. Black managed to open the game in the center. Black will stay with the two bishops and white will struggle to find a way how to continue because you can see that mainly black pieces will be much more active than white, especially the knight on a3, which is completely out of the play and not to mention that this lie diagonal is in black favor. Now, also what I think that white can try and uh, what I really analyzed a lot is the move uh, c3. The move which is somehow, you can see, very connected with the line, positional line uh, and ninth move, knight d5. But here we have two pawns here and here. And then what I think here, it's also not the best for white, I think, uh, that he tried to jump from very attacking approach after the bishop f6 to the positional approach after the c3. So. I think that is much more uh, challenging for black if white just try to continue his idea. So if he play positional uh, knight d5 and then bishop f6, bishop f6, I think that much more sense has the positions with c3 than here. Because here it's not something that white can just try to do uh, in, in view of trying to reroute the pieces and so on and so on. Because in, in very next move black is more than in time to push the pawn on f5 and then basically white will just struggle to find a way how to continue because now he needs to take on f5, lose the control, uh, lose the pawn on e4 and then after even the, um, the moves like knight c3, castle and knight e3, bishop d7, you can easily see that next pawn will came to f5 and then it will be something that is very, to be honest, very unpleasant for white. Because now this knight is never the knight anymore, which is supported by the pawn from e4. So here you can see that I think this is not the right way for playing with white, because if you play positionally from the start, you should try to get this plan to the end. If you play aggressively, I think that is much more um, convenient for white to push a pawn to c4. And basically this is something that I think white can or need to try to do in those lines. And then I show you, of course, the main line, which is, I think here, of course, the move bishop to d3. So white wants to secure and not allow black at some point to push a pawn on f5 if he doesn't need. And then he tried to take over the control over the light square and pushing and attacking. Um, later on black on the queen side. After the bishop d3, the absolute main idea is knight e7. And here I show how to play in the video against the castle, which is, I think, also not enough because knight e5, 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 f5 will once again run into incredible position for black. So this is just dream for black because if white get the pawn on, on d5, then he will never get any kind of the advantage over the d6 pawn or over the d file and then basically both of those pawns on e5, f5, the next pawn that is now just in time to push himself later on to f5 and the bishop pair makes incredible position for black. So this is just dream 
position for black, which I think is not enough for white to, to have the equal position. I think that here black is completely better. So because of that, the knight e7 is the ultimate way of playing. And after the queen e7, once again, white has a choice. As in many, many lines, we can try to play here with white or white can try to play c3 or c4. Once again, both of the moves are, I think, nice. But uh, to be honest, I think that once again, c3 will not go white anywhere. And you can easily see that here, Black is just in time to put the pawn on f5. And if black managed to break through in the center, then white pieces will be on very bad squares. Not to mention that uh, if white collapse in the center, of course, on the e4 square, then the pawns, which are for now, let's say, weak, will be incredibly strong. So e5 and d5 and f5 pawn, you can see, can make incredible... Um, mess into the white position. So here white has number of choices. Once again, I cover mainly the five different lines and I hope that I make them very deep in very uh, small details because I think it's very important. And because of that, I really try to find and show you the way how to break through with black pieces. Um, if white wants to play for any kind of the advantage, I think that he should here just take on e7 and then of course play c4. So basically this is the main line, which I think is, is the best one for white, of course. And then after the f5 and castle and castle, once again, white has more or less five different ways of playing. And I show you here, of course, why I think that cb5 after the d5 is not good. This is a classical breakthrough for black where black has incredible pawn structure in the center. And I think that even if white get one or even two pawns, it cannot be equal in the position because those both bishops and incredible central pawns will make very, very strong position for black. Then also I show how to play against the moves like rook e1. This is, I think, something like artificial move, which okay, make something, but uh, it's not really achieve anything because, okay, this rook support the pawn on e4, but white with this move doesn't make anything to try to break through somewhere. And then also I show you how to play against queen e2. Once again, uh, I explain you in details why I think that this queen on e2 is completely misplaced and uh, after the move uh, bishop b7, black will have incredible uh, position as well. Of course, what I think is here, um, very, very strong move is of course, queen to h5, where I think that uh, we have a position where after something like rook b8, e takes on f5, e4, and then rook e1, we get in some kind of the position where I think that uh, we should show what black can do. And this is, I think, after the queen g4, the main position for white that he can try in order to get any kind of the advantage. And uh, I use many, many days and months to analyze this position, of course, with the computer, but also with the help of, uh, of strong players as well. And I think that I found some very nice moments, moves and ideas that uh, somehow allow black to maintain the balance here. And after the moves like uh, king h8, which is I think here very, very important, bishop e4, bishop b2, I show the lines where I think that uh, uh, black will survive. Not only survive, but uh, in this very messy position, black can get um, I think the equal position. Okay, this is for sure the position where I think that white can hope for more, but uh, black is not without the chances. And after the something like bishop c3, rook b8, rook b8, I show here that this pawn on d4 can be very, very nice pawn. And after the moves like queen e4, king g7, g3, rook d8, uh, I think that it's very hard for white to improve. And... Uh, to be honest, 
quite easy pawn up, but uh, how he will continue? He needs to be very, very creative to do something more because this knight is out of the play. It is really strong bishop on c3 and incredibly strong pawn that can in any moment go to d3, d2 and then uh, white will never stop him. So I think that the position is of course uh, really messy, but I don't think that black should be worse here. And uh, of course, if white can improve the position, I think that it's something around here. But uh, I hope that I really show, and I'm pretty sure that I did, manage to cover the variations, the exact variations, where I think that black can uh, hope to get uh, equal chances. So, if white can anywhere get the better position, I think that this is mainly uh, the position that, uh, or the line after the bishop f6 that he can try and he need to try, but black has his own resources and uh, I'm not afraid uh, that black will manage to get a very solid position where he can just play and hope for sometimes even more than the equality.